Rodolfo, here's how I can conceive of the world. I know there's this all reality out there, whatever it is, and I have this sense that I'm here. And I know that it's my brain that somehow does all of this. How do I make progress then between relating all reality, whatever is real, is out there, and what I am seems to be in here? Absolutely. Well, Mark, uh, Robert, the issue is as follows. Um, one can imagine uh, that there is a reality outside that is completely different from what we see, right? Oh, sure. Now, because we move actively, we know that that could not be too far from the truth. Uh, that what we see must be what is there, otherwise we'd be hitting trees as we walk <laughs> and so on. So, so there is a way in which reality is validated yes. in our, inside our heads. Now yes. the question is, how do you make reality? Yes. Or you can even ask it more profoundly, how complete is our image of the external world, or how, how do we actually get to generating such? And uh, what, what seems to be very clear is as follows. The system evolved as a set of neurons, yeah, closed around the by bone, that are capable a priori, before, they act, before you open your eyes, so to speak, are capable of forming particular type of circuits, mm -hmm. which upon being presented with light, would make an image. If they don't make an image, you won't be able to survive, and you'll be eaten. <laughs> so <laughs> the question is very simple. It is selected. The system selects by trial and error, if you like. A system that is capable of imaging internally what is outside. Now, the internal image clearly is just a description. It's not that we have no mountains in our head. Yes. What we do have is a ability to make mountains from almost a computational, but it's not really a computational computer set point of view. So how do we, how do we, what are we doing? We are emulating uh -huh. reality inside our head. We have managed to generate a dream-like condition where we actually have sounds and objects that move with respect to backgrounds and all of these things without effort. So that is basically what the nervous system is about. It's a huge, it's a de beautiful device to emulate reality and in fact to make reality. So if we're emulating reality, indeed helping to create reality, and you're using this term like a dream machine, it's for the brain. Normally we think of a dream as something that's not reality, that it's, 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 a, it's our own fantasy world that has nothing to do with reality, but I think what you're saying is that the same process by which we dream is the way we exist in the real world also. Absolutely. I mean, it would be extraordinarily uh, strange to have a brain, brain to dream with <laughs> and one to see with, because ultimately, in every case, you're actually making an internal image. You know, we're making colors when there are no colors outside. There are no colors. Yeah. We, 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 we hear sounds that don't exist as such outside. So perceptions are actually made internally by brain function are the easiest way to uh, make an internal representation of the external world. So light is electromagnetic wave radiation at different frequencies and amplitudes, and sounds are air pressure, and, and that's what's in the outside Absolutely. world. Absolutely. But we create. We actually create. So when people say, when the tree falls, is there a sound? There is no sound, because sound is an interpretation. Uh -huh. Sound is not movement of air. Right? Mm. So, okay, so then the question is, how do we go about doing things mm. like that? And of course, the, the old story, the old points of view were, well, the things are connected and information comes in, um, sensor systems are activated, and then they evoke internally uh, an event. And of course, we've you know, I've been working this for, for many years, and I've come to a completely different uh, point of view, and that is, the brain is always going. So it is not like there is the brain doing nothing and stimulus comes in. Yeah. The answer is no. First of all, I have to be woken before I can see. Yes. To, be, to be awake means that there's a huge amount of activity going on. Now, on that background, I can now see and hear. So it is basically modifying slightly what is already going on. 
Now, without being awake means if you're really dreaming, you're still doing a lot of those things, but you're not taking in the sensations from the external world. That's the only difference. That is right. Which means that seeing is making an object, is, is binding different parts of the activity into one image. And of course, one does not ultimately see with one's eyes. As you said, said a moment ago, I dream in beautiful color and background music and all <laughs> the above without using my senses. Yeah. So clearly it is an interpretation based, of course, uh, in uh, uh, information that comes from our senses. So the differences between dreaming and being awake is that our dreams when we are awake are basically modified or modulated by our senses. And that's fascinating because then it seems like this concept of dreaming, which we think sometimes is just artificial and, and irrelevant, is the core. It is, in fact, the core. And it, it works when we're awake. It's just modified by the sensations. Yeah, but not only is it modified by the sensation, it is modified by our own thought. So uh, I remember as a child being told, though, that there's, there, are, there, are, there are but two aspects of brain function, induction and deduction. Yeah. And you do something, and then you think. When you, when you are, dedu when you are deducing, you are dreaming. Uh -huh. Think of it. I mean, you know, how can this be? And then you, your eyes go up, and mm -hmm. you have inside, and you put this thing inside this other. Oh, this is. So you are actually, you are, you are using your dream ability to think. Oh. Right. Yeah. I have to think about that. <laughs> no, but, but sure. So, yeah. so, so, in fact, even when we are awake, uh, when we are not paying, when we are deriving an equation, when we are thinking of a theory, when we we are uh, contemplating what we are about to write as a musician, all of these things, this music is inside. You yes. are actively dreaming, right, although right. you are awake. Yeah. So, in fact, yeah. this is mostly what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Now, how does memory f articulate with this? Well, memory is actually very lovely because, of course, memory is secondary to perception. You cannot memorize before you see. Yes. I mean, you, you, you need a, an initial event, which is basically given by your anatomy, your physiology. And then, of course, you find that there are dreams, that there are solutions, that are conducive, and some that are not conducive. So you basically reinforce those events that are conducive. And, and a lot, to me, a lot of the memory is basically uh, fixed action pattern memory. So what uh, does that mean, fixed action pattern? Fixed action pattern means events that are always done similarly. So you uh -huh. actually learn how to vocalize. For instance, I, I'm, I'm talking in a particular language. I am saying more or less the same sounds to express certain thoughts. So this right. so language is a beautiful uh, example of fixed action patterns, as is the movement of my hands. Right. And if you notice, when you look at people talking, their hands and the yeah. speech it, it, are organized in, in time. So it's a rhythm right. that is then... And, and with hundreds of muscles. Of, uh, it, with, 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 with billions of neurons yes. obeying rhythmicity. And then this brings us to the next issue. So how is the whole thing organized? And it's organized because cells have intrinsic electrical rhythmicity. And as in many other things, uh, we were saying, uh, uh, we could imagine uh, that um, you know, we are made out of single cells and somehow the single cells themselves, a single element cannot do it. But if they, if they organize themselves in time, like the muscles, many fibers activating simultaneously, mm. then we move or then we think. So thinking is a collective property of many cells functioning simultaneously.